So I'm going to talk about uh, clearing up the energy in your space. In ballroom dancing, there's nothing more. There's nothing worse than a dirty dance floor. My husband and I attended a wedding once where the floor floor was so dirty that you actually stuck to it. <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. It, was like, uh, it reminded me of the same thing. It reminded me that the same thing can happen in life. We can get stuck in our lives, and that it can make it difficult to move, let alone dance to the music of life. Ballroom dancing, for example, is about style, form, and movement. Dancers need to hear the beat, know the correct style of dance, hold the right form, and move in harmony with everyone else on the floor, get it wrong, and you end up missing the beat and going against the flow. It never dawned on me that my home could be a major contributor to stress and anxiety. It was a lesson my husband and I learned in a very unusual way. It saved our marriage and our careers, and it brought a level of happiness and success that we, ne that we never thought was possible. It also gave us a deeper respect and understanding of our spiritual connection to the divine. And all of this came about from a simple dinner invitation that I almost refused to accept. My husband was attending a conference in Florida one year when he ran into Ted, an old friend of his from college. They had worked in different industries, so they had lost touch over the years. Bert told Ted things hadn't gone so well for us over the years as a result of all the corporate restructuring and downsizing we had been through with our, our careers. My husband and I both worked in the lab industry, so I was a lab tech and he was a lab technician. And uh, in the 80s, the uh, powers that be decided that uh, private labs, private labs need to be shut down. And uh, by uh, 1988, 50% of all lab techs were out of work. Wow. So we were restructuring and downsizing. So one of us had to get out. Ted listened intently and then suggested we get together for dinner. There's someone I think you need to meet, was all he said. Bert called from the conference and told me what had happened and that he invited Ted over for dinner the following week. He said he's bringing along a friend of his as well. She's from England, and I hope that's all right with you. <laughs> At the time, things were not going well for us personally. We were both very unhappy, and sooner or later something was going to give. It was either going to be our marriage or bankruptcy or both. Entertaining at the time didn't have me all giddy with anticipation, to put it mildly, and I'm not much of a cook. Uh, I considered myself to be a poor hostess, but with a little encouragement from my husband and much hesitation on my part, I reluctantly agreed. As the evening progressed, however, it turned out that dinner was the last thing I needed to be concerned about. When Ted arrived at our home, he introduced us to his friend, Sheila. After the introductions were over, Sheila stepped forward into the hallway, dropped her arms down to her sides, and closed her eyes. So she literally walked into, walked into the house. <laughs> Hello. How are you supposed to react to that? <laughs> <laughs> and you weren't you yet. No, no. I was on me yet. <laughs> Her behavior was totally unexpected and it caught us off guard. Uh, we stood there in stunned silence and looked at her, not sure if we were supposed to do anything or just wait. <laughs> Ted smiled at us with this look of benevolent understanding and acceptance. Within a few seconds, her arms began to move in and out from her sides in a very subtle manner. Who is this one? I thought to myself. <laughs> Ted continued to wait in respectful silence. Fascinated by her unusual behavior, we joined him in quiet respect, waiting for her to open her eyes again. <laughs> Intuitively, I could tell that she was checking out the energy in our, home, in our home. I didn't understand why it was necessary, but whatever she was doing, it felt important. So I said nothing. After about a minute, she opened her eyes and she smiled at us. And I, all I could think was, well, that was different. <laughs> Sheila then asked if we would be so kind as to take her on a tour of our home. We found her request peculiar and a little intrusive. But quite frankly, by this point, we were so intrigued with what she was up to <laughs> that we pretty much would have read anything. We dutifully took them on a tour of the entire house. And all I could think was, thank God I made the kids' beds. <laughs> <laughs> we all walked through the entire house with Sheila examining every single room including the utility room, the linen closets, the sheet. The woman was opening doors, you know. I mean, I just felt the house was for sale. Um, we were all very quiet during the tour, respecting Sheila's continued silence. And after the inspection was over, we all sat down to dinner. Ted was always fun to be with. He was never short of hilarious stories to share from his many adventures traveling around the world. Sheila, on the other hand, said very little the entire evening. After dinner was over and we were lingering over coffee and dessert, Sheila finally spoke up and asked if we would like to know why she wanted a tour of the house. Dying. <laughs> she said, 
Your home is not healthy and is a gift to you, and in respect for having me over for dinner, I'd like to offer suggestions on how to make your home a healthier one. <laughs> Would you like to know what I have found? No kidding. <laughs> Personally, I was dying of curiosity. I looked over to my husband, who had the skeptical look on his face. I'm married to a Dutch farm boy. Skepticism is big on his roster. Um, <laughs> we naturally both agreed to her analysis, and for the next 20 minutes, she proceeded to describe things about us, uh, uh, things to us about our lives that were very personal. I mean, very personal. She explained to us that we would never succeed financially and would continue to struggle with our health and our happiness if we didn't make some changes. Quite frankly, we were both completely gobsmacked. We had never discussed our personal problems with Ted in the past, so there's no way he could have known that we were struggling financially. That meant she couldn't have possibly known either. No one, no one we knew, um, no one knew we were almost on the verge of declaring bankruptcy, not even our families. We hadn't told anybody. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. My husband sat in stunned silence. You could tell that Tell knew this was coming because he sat there and grinned like a Cheshire cat. <laughs> I looked at her and I said, okay, so how do we fix it? Okay, told us what's wrong, now what? And she smiled at us sweetly and replied, and replied, it's all very easily done. Sheila explained to us in minute detail what to do, and I wrote it all down. And for the next six weeks, Bert and I were on a mission to make all the changes to our home that she had recommended. The changes were simple and easy to, and easy to do. Paint, move a picture here and there, get some plants, fix a leaky tap, rearrange the furniture. And one major suggestion she made was to change the way the front door opened. She suggested that we hang it so that we could open the door in the other direction. Oddly enough, we were already in the process of looking for a new door anyways, so it was perfect timing for us. Within months of completing all the changes she recommended, our lives changed radically. After 10 years of pay cuts and part-time jobs, we got a new job, a raise, and a company car. I landed a full-time management job, and by this time I'm working four contract positions. Uh, we learned about positive affirmations and how to use them, and as a result, for the first time in years, we had money in the bank, a new car, and jobs with benefits. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was just from rearranging a few things in our home. Amazing, eh? Mm -hmm.